Hey, Lena, how are you doing? I'm doing great. What I'm going to do <laughs> is um, figure out here how I can share um, access. I think uh, there's a green button here for me, so I'm going to try and push it and see what happens. Okay, to share that. my screen. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, let's see. Okay, host this. I will post this screen sharing. Somewhere you need to give me permission. <laughs> I just want to say while we're figuring this out, I'm so grateful and so blessed to be part of this streamathon. I think it's an amazing initiative, Elena. And I just want to congratulate you on it. It's been amazing so far. I've been watching from the very start. And the speakers are just phenomenal. Um, I've learned so much already. Okay, I put that I am allowing sharing. Okay, let me try again. Okay, yeah, it's it's allowing me now. All right, let me share my screen quickly. There you go. I hope you guys can see that. You can see it. You can just let me know. I'm, I'm going to put myself on mute as well. Okay, great. All right, so share from the beginning. Okay. So we are here for um, finding yourself again for the Christmas Widow with me. I'm Jana de Tsoi. I'm so very blessed to be here with you guys. And I've got so much to share with you. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Um, well, uh, I say get ready to have some fun, but we're already having a ton of fun right here. Um, I'm broadcasting live from Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, I don't know what the weather is there by you. For me at this stage, uh, it is nighttime. It's seven o'clock at night. And although it's winter here, I'm feeling hot because I just moved from the Northern Cape to Joburg. And at the Northern Cape, it's like freezing temperatures. So I'm a bit hot, okay. Um, I just want to thank you for spending the time in su support of the Christmas Widow. Um, I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Okay, I'm Jana de Toy, uh, author, personal manager, and student Christian counselor for JanaDeToy.com. I'm the creator of the Finding Yourself Again 11 Steps to Freedom system. Um, I'm a number one Amazon bestselling author of Create a Beautiful Life, a Christian Women's Freedom Guide from Feeling Lost to Finding Yourself Again. You can see it there on your right. Um, now, I help ambitious Christian women between the ages of 30 to 60 who feel unloved, unworthy, not good enough, and stuck in their old mentality and self-sabotage to find themselves in the freedom to choose the life uh, they want. So I just want you to let me know in the comments below if you can hear and see me and hear and see my slideshow so that I know that I'm not just talking to myself. Okay, so who am I? Um, in 2016, I was morbidly obese. I was so depressed that I actually cut off my long hair. I had long hair completely off with a clipper because I felt unworthy of love. Um, and I wanted to commit suicide. I just had my third child. I was a stepmother of three more children because I married their father at the age of 19. And he had full custody of them. So uh, by that time, when I just had my baby, I was unemployed. Uh, hubby and I were experiencing marital problems. I actually lost my connection to God. Uh, and I had no idea who I was anymore. So um, I didn't know what I wanted in life. I didn't know where I was headed. And I hated myself. And that was six years ago. I was feeling stuck and I was feeling lost. So scrolling through Facebook, I came across an online ad as 30 days challenge. And I actually needed to lose the weight and get fitter and generally feel better about myself and my situation. So I actually entered that competition uh, where I posted raw and real videos of me doing burpees and squats and stuff like that. Um, and it was a progressive beginner's challenge. And what happened is people actually started or related to me. The woman related to me because I was just raw and real with my, you know, buzzed off hair. And I didn't care how I looked. I just posted the videos, tried to make fun of myself. And uh, I developed quite a following from that. So in that year, I actually managed to lose 27 kilograms, which is about, uh, it's more than 50 pounds. Then I decided, um, to create an exercise group on Facebook where 400 women joined me in a daily exercise. And we posted videos and pictures of ourselves exercising. It was very fun. Uh, people started calling me Inspiro Freak because I was the one um, um, inspiring everyone to get their butts off the couch. And um, 
I realized that it's a passion and I started studying personal training and athletic nutrition and I actually became a weight loss coach. So I help people lose weight, look fit, and um, I also help my own family lose 97 kgs together. It's about almost 200 pounds. I help several of my clients win or place the five in prominent weight loss competitions. But, and here's where it hits the fan, I sabotage myself. The 27 kilograms that I lost was gained back with interest. I lost credibility and confidence in myself and my family life took a turn for the worse because hubby and I separated and I moved away. So at the time I had 27 full-time clients and again, I felt lost and stuck. So there on the, uh, on the right-hand side, you can see all of the transformations. Uh, it's my brother, my daughter, my uh, stepson, me, some of my clients, my husband, uh, again, my daughter at the bottom. So um, I quit, I just quit in search of finding out why we sabotage ourselves like that. And that led me to doing various diplomas and certificates in applied psychology, including my life coaching practitioner diploma, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness, and NLP. I also started researching and reading 100 plus books a year on personal development and transformation. Now, I started that in 2018. I'm still going with that. I'm 650 books strong. So actually, when I work it out, I actually read about 100 to 150 books uh, a year. And I'm very proud of that because it is what's changing my life. Okay. I also started, okay, I've cured my emotional instability and depression. And I actually manage my ADHD. So if you're wondering why I have to have this slideshow, it's because of my ADHD, because I won't be able to remember everything. <laughs> so now I know my purpose in life. And life is good because I know my top three values are faith, mastery, and freedom. And I prioritize my life around that. I'm following my dream and my calling. And life is fulfilling to me. Uh, at this stage, I feel so connected to God that I'm studying for a bachelor's in theology with a specialization in Christian counseling at the South African Theology Seminary. I'm designing the life that I want to live and I'm structuring my life to reach it. Uh, I'm currently, I just launched my book like a month ago and I became a number one best-selling author on Amazon and I've developed a one-year coaching program for the women that I help. So now, when I look in the mirror, I can honestly say that I love myself. And out of my greatest despair was to come my greatest gift. So that's what I do now. That is what I'll help other women with now. Okay, so um, what I tell my clients is finding your purpose in life uh, begins with finding yourself. That is what I'm going to discuss with you tonight. Step number two is finding out what you love to do. What is your passions in life? Step number three is finding out who you want to serve. And then number four is finding out what you want to help them with. What do you want to, what, what do you want to help the people with that you want to serve? And then step number five is finding out what the outcomes is that your prospective clients would want to achieve. So that is how you find purpose in life. But I'm just going to spend time tonight talking about step number one, which is finding yourself again. Because I realized that if you're widowed, I think... Um, I think your whole foundation is ripped from you and you need to reinvent yourself. Um, and even if you're just a, a member of the general public listening tonight, if you've, if you've experienced a significant transitions and, and tr transformation in your life, um, you need to build from the ground up um, just to strengthen and reinforce that foundation and building something new from out of the ashes. And that's how we rise. You are the expert of you. So if you're struggling to find external validation, you will, struggle, you will struggle to find out who you are because we can't look at um, feedback from others only. We have to, it has to come from inside. So we have to ask ourselves some meaningful questions. Okay, uh, let me just see. Okay. Um, your mind works like a Google search engine. So whatever you put into it will pop out. Um, so if you want to ask yourself some questions, your mind's going to go through and look at all the experiences from your conception to where you are now in your life, okay, because you've got an unconscious, a subconscious and a conscious, and the way I describe it to my clients is your unconscious is like the vast library of everything you've ever experienced in your life from conception to where you are now, okay, so it's a vast library of books, 
okay, your subconscious are all the books that you've taken out this month. Okay, so you remember vaguely, yes, you remember stuff that happened to you five years ago, stuff like that. And then your conscious mind is the book that you're reading right now. It is fresh in your mind. You know what it's about. Um, you can recall the feelings quite easily. Okay, so that's how your brain works. Um, I want to challenge you and write in the comments below the five words that you would use to describe yourself with now. So I want to see in the comments below. Um, what are the five words that you would describe yourself as? Would you say, I'm smart, um, I'm worthless, I'm, um, I'm a winner, I'm a loser, I'm a mom, am I an accountant? What are you? How do you describe yourself? What are those five words? Okay. And who do you wish to, you could become in the future? If you look two years ahead, five years ahead, who would you wish to become? What do you believe you're worth? And are you acknowledging the part that you play in your life? I want you to wake up. I want you to wake up and I want you to start becoming aware of yourself. I want you to stop numbing yourself with food, with alcohol, with other addictions. And I want you to start feeling those feelings. And when you get uncomfortable, I want you to write it in your journal. Get to the bottom of things because you can't heal your feelings if you just bandage them up. So it's like someone getting hurt. They've got a thorn in their arm and now they're just putting on a lot of bandages and they're protecting that thorn from not getting bumped. Instead of doing that, remove that thorn so that that wound can heal. Okay, give it some air. Heal your feelings so that you don't have to bandage it up and cover it up because you're so afraid of somebody triggering them. Remove that thorn because that wound needs air. You need to uncover the foundational limiting beliefs and distortions. I want you to write a new story because God gives you a pen. And I've got a pen in my hand and I've got ink in my pen. And I've got to write the story of my life. And God has given me free will. I'm not a robot and I'm not a zombie. I've been given free reign and I've been given unique talents, skills and interests. And this page before me is blank. And if I don't like the story that I'm writing at this moment, I hold the pen. I'm not going to blame someone else sitting at their desk next to me, busy writing their own story. I'm going to change the story. If I don't like what I'm writing down, I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to throw a plot twist or two in there. Think about the story that you're going to write in your workbook. Okay, <laughs> This is just for my pop-up truck clients. But think about the story that you're going to write. Okay, And remember that each and every day you get issued with a brand new page. And chapters end and new chapters begin. So write a new story. Start a new chapter. And if you don't like where you're at, move. You're not a tree. Move. Change the story. Flip the page. Start that new chapter. Start the new paragraph. Or write a new sentence. For goodness sakes, just write a new word. But just start. And take that pen that you were dealt with and max it out. Now, someone said to me, um, well, Yana, I, you know, the pen that I was dealt is, is a pen of disability and it's, it's a pen of struggle. You know what? Some of get, us get a pocket pen and some of us get a big pen and some of us get a pen that doesn't write well anymore. And some of us get a pen with ink that is blotchy. But you know what? Take the pen that you were dealt with and max it out. I want you to take 100% responsibility for your life. Okay, Rachel Hollis says, every year you close a new chapter to your story. Please don't write the same one 75 times and call it a life. Okay, I want you to take 100% responsibility for your life. Don't let anyone else hold the key to your life. Don't, don't give the pen to anyone else. You're the driver, you're in the driver's seat. Take that pen and write, and write the story of your life. Write something that's interesting, Something that's going to make you laugh. 
something that's going to make you cry, something that's going to make you be excited. Write something awe inspiring. What is it that you could do for the world? You have the freedom and you have the power to choose who you're willing to become. And you can at any time say, I don't like myself. Who else would I want to be instead? So the power of our tongues. Joel Osteen says, you can change your words by, you can change your world by changing your words. So remember that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay. In the book, As a Man Thinketh, so it, uh, as a man thinketh of James Allen, he says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Now that actually comes from the Bible because in the Bible, it says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So make sure that the language that you're using with yourself and with others are building you up and not breaking you down. Focus and use the creative power of your, of your tongue. Don't waste it on cursing and criticizing and belittling yourself and other people. You have got power in your tongue, and I want you to use it. Use powerful I am statements and prep your brain for the future. Stay true to yourself. Because every day, we have an opportunity to review and evaluate our lives. And we can ask ourselves whether we are being true to ourselves. Are you living according to your values? Do you even know what they are? It is called being congruent. Are you lying to yourself? Are you breaking promises to yourself, not living according to your values? That's called cognitive dissonance. Being true to yourself means that you're unapologetically and authentically and uniquely you. I want you to get comfortable with being different. Get comfortable with valuing things that others don't because you don't have to like things that others do. You are as unique as your fingerprints. You can be different. What are the things that, are, that you are willing to suffer for? What is your heart? Okay. I'm going to skip a few of the slides because I've got a lot of these slides. Okay. How do your kids and your dogs react to you? Because a lot can be drawn from simply watching how your kids and your dog react to you coming home. Are they happy to see you? Or do they disappear when you come into the room? That is just a little thought to ponder. Okay. And remember that transformation takes time. It took you years to get where you are today. You're not going to fix your life in a 30-minute training. This is just a wake-up call. It's an introduction. It is subject headings. It took me six years and over 650 books, various courses, certificates, diplomas to know what I know today. You need to change the channel. If you don't like where you're at, you need to change that channel. Like you change the channel on, the, on a TV with the remote. Change it. Take account, you know, be accountable. Because accountability breeds responsibility, according to Stephen Covey. If you're working or have your own business or you're a mom, you need that structured and focused support. How often are you taking time to grow? How often are you taking time for your self-care? You need that daily focus time. Warren Buffett says, the best investment that you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you'll earn. Okay. The Geico principle. Um, my father always said, garbage in, garbage out. So what are you feeding yourself? What are, what's going into your mind and out? Okay. You have to develop a rule book for success. And when I say a rule book for success, is get a journal. When you're reading books, highlight it. When you're listening to something like this stream of thought, then at least take notes because whatever you're learning here, you're going to forget in the next 24 hours if you don't take notes. So be a serious student of your life. Be in a constant cycle of renewing your mind, influencing your actions and improving your circumstances. Plan your life. Because if you keep shooting blindfolded, you stand 99% chance to miss. So start aiming. Decide what do you want out of your life. Dream a dream. Make it a vision and plan for it and do it. Okay. What is the difference between a dream versus a vision? A dream is something that you think about that's just the up the, in the air. A vision is something that you take your dream, you implement it into a vision, you develop it into a plan, and you start taking daily focused action towards making that dream reality. Because otherwise, dreams will just die on your pillow. 
And if you're looking for a sign, there it is. Okay. Who are you willing to become? Are you willing to do what it takes to realize your dreams? Because only 1% of people really take action. So if you're here, I know that you're part of the 1%. Because you could have been uh, zoned out watching Netflix. But you're here. You're trying to develop yourself. Okay. There are probably some things that you're already doing right. But where is the return on investment? What has changed in your life in the past 12 months? And what will change in the next 12 months? Are you going to be in the same situation or are you choosing to make massive change? Okay. Then I've got a life balance questionnaire right there. You can take a screenshot quickly. Go and rate your life from a scale of 1 to 10 in those categories quickly. Um, so that you can see where do you need to start working on. Okay. I'm going to skip that right now. Become a serious student. Like I said, one of my biggest values is masteries because um, what have you spent 10,000 hours on gaining mastery of? Okay. If you read 500 books, it could mean mastery. And it seems enormous. But 500 books is just two weeks a week. Okay. It will take you five years. That's mastery in a field and then implement what you learn don't just hoard knowledge implement what you learn okay all right i'm skipping a lot of this but i need to because otherwise we're not going to get through everything okay and all of this is available in my pop-up training that i host um, and i'll tell you a little bit about that okay you need to build momentum what is the actual steps in your plan that it's going to take? When will you start taking action? Because one decision at a time, before you know it, your life can look drastically different. If you had to sit here and think about who you could become three years from now, how wonderful life could be, um, who could you be three years from now? Okay, then invest in yourself. Investing in yourself is the best investment you'll ever make because there's no financial investment that will ever match that. Invest in your growth. Okay. So maybe you're feeling like that little hamster because I sure, sure am. Um, I've tried to cram 50 books into 30 minutes and it's completely impossible. I cannot teach you everything in 30 minutes. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a group, Elena, with your permission. I've got a Facebook group for Christian millennial women between the ages of 30 and 60. If you want to jo join my group, it is the Finding Yourself Again dedicated group for Christian women. And this, uh, this is where I host the full pop-up training. And it's a five-day training. So if you're, um, it is completely free. So if you're a woman, if you're a Christian woman between that ages and you would love to join us, you're very welcome to uh, reach out, uh, join that group. Uh, where we work uh, on the story of your life, your values, your vision, your mission, and your goals. And then um, my book is available on Amazon. Um, it is Create a Beautiful Life, uh, a Christian Women's Freedom Guide from Feeling Lost to Finding Yourself Again, available now on Amazon for 99 cents. And yeah, uh, I want you to comment below and share on this, uh, share this live stream of Elena so that more people can see it. The more we heart and like and, and interact, the more people can see this streamathon. So I want you guys to share her streamathon on your personal page. And I want you to write in the comments below what is your top takeaway so far? And what is your top question? So that we can get some interaction for Elena. So that's it, Elena. Thanks so very much for hosting me. Thank you for inviting me to speak here. Um, I hope and I wish you well for this for the rest of the 24 hours and uh, all the speakers that still up. Thank you, Jana. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation. Let's see here. Okay, so you were able to take off the share screen. Uh, let's see here. I know there's a little time delay. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you for, for sharing that information. Um, before we get ready to wrap things up, what is like one thing that you could share with um, someone that was really feeling like maybe all that good stuff is, is for them, but it's not for me. Just speaking from your heart, 
what is one thing that you could offer somebody listening that really wants to improve their life? Yeah, well, I would just say that um, if you look at someone else's success and you think that that's not me, I can't do that. You just need to remember that if anybody can do it, then you can do it too. So if you're looking at someone's success in this streamathon even, and you're thinking, wow, you know, what can that person accomplish? I could, I could never do that. Um, you're a person, they're a person, you're in the world, they're in the world. Um, you've got 24 hours, we've got 24 hours. So that's what we can accomplish if you put your mind to it. It is all about your mentality. It's all about how you perceive things. So I would just say, um, start by, uh, like Jose also said, um, start by getting a mentor, start by reading some personal development books and get into the habit of growing yourself. Um, personal growth is the main thing because when you're mentally fit, the rest of your life will get in line. Love it. Love it. And it has been um, a true honor to witness your growth yeah. over these past few years. It really is. I celebrate your book. I celebrate your accomplishment and just um, really the action that you've taken in your own life to make those changes. So yes, it is proof that it is possible. Anyone can do this. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, when you found me in 2020 or I found you, I don't know which way it went, but um, at that time, I didn't even, I didn't even have the courage to do lives, you know, and here I am in a streamathon. I mean, <laughs> you know, and all of the information I had was in my head. So now I've got a published book and I've got courses and I've got, you know, blogs and stuff. So, so um, I'm living proof that you can be anybody and become somebody if you, if you really set your mind to it. Love it. And you're absolutely right. So I thank you so much for the time that you have given us today and for, you know, putting that together.